and the volume is 75 milliliters of water. That's 11 sugar cubes. You notice you can still see some tiny particulate on the bottom. The system has been warmed to help increase the rate of dissolving. 11 is gone. Let's try 12 and 13. Twelve. Thirteen. So we shake it to try and speed up the rate of dissolving because the rate of dissolving is increased when we move the particles around because it will help the water particles disperse or spread out the sugar molecules. You'll notice the cubes are breaking down relatively quick even though we've already got 13. This is the 13th one going in. <clears throat> it's the same volume as the volume that you were working with in class so it's still 75 milliliters of water being warmed on the hot plate. And you'll notice that when we agitate or shake the system, it speeds up the rate of dissolving. It's much faster than the rate that you were working with. The video's only been just over two minutes and we've almost dissolved three whole cubes. Well, that's 13 cubes altogether. And if you remember back to your warm system between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius, it took some of you more than 20 minutes to dissolve that cube. You'll notice these ones are gone too. Can you still see it? So when I take the container off of the hot plate, you'll notice it's, it's probably going to cool down a little bit because there's no direct heat source anymore, but the system's already warm. Is it taking more time to break this one down? You know the solution saturated when a solute that normally can be dissolved in the solvent stops dissolving or it takes longer, eventually you're, you're going to get some sugar particles that just don't want to dissolve, so they're just going to sit at the bottom. Again, I already expect that the rate of dissolving is going to be faster because the system's warmer because I'm heating it up on a hot plate in between shaking it like this. But you'll notice, again, the rate of dissolving is slowing down, not because the system's warmer, but because there isn't as much room as there used to be. The system's becoming saturated. There's only so much solute you can add into a certain volume of solvent. So solubility depends on the amount of space too. So the volume of your system. Alright, now check this out. We start with, or we've had 75 milliliters of water in the system. And we look here, let's check the meniscus. Our water reading is actually, let me see if I can show you here. Let's see how it's more than 100. It's almost reading at 150, almost. And that's because we've added 22 sugar cubes so far. So the sugar cubes have mass and take up space. So they're increasing the volume over time. We're on number 22 right now. Let's see how it's dissolving. You'll notice that the temperature reading is 66. 66, 67 degrees Celsius. 
So our system is warm. It's not boiling, but it's warm. And you'll notice it's going up. It's a rough, roughly around 70 degrees every time I take it off to shake it. It is important to maintain temperature as, as best you can. Uh, because as the temperature changes, the solubility can change. Solubility is dependent on temperature, but it's also dependent, dependent on volume. So another thing to consider too is, as we're dissolving our sugar cubes in our, in our uh, Erlenmeyer flask, um, when we increase the temperature above room temperature, even at room temperature, we're still going to have to deal with some evaporative loss. That means some of the water molecules are going to escape through the top. Now when that happens, it changes the volume slightly. Um, so for our intents and purposes right now, we're just going to assume or pretend that the volume isn't changing significantly and that our volume is still going to be around 75 milliliters of water that we started with, okay? Just to make it a little bit easier to for our calculations later. So you'll notice this cube is not dissolving fast. It's actually much slower than it used to be. Uh, I think we're at number 26 now. So the numbers keep going up. Let's see if 26 is the last one to dissolve. Now if you look, you can start to see like waves in the solution. And those waves are basically dissolved sugar inside of the water. And the heat, you can see, is moving it up on the left-hand side. And it's rolling across the top and then falling back down as it cools. Those are convection currents. You can see them going across the bottom to the left up the left hand side as the molecules get warmer and more energetic and then across the top and then they fall back down on the right hand side as they cool down or release heat into the above the system in the air above. And you notice the sugar cube is actually dissolving much slower now. So because we're maintaining volume and temperature eventually we're going to hit our solubility limit or what the actual solubility of 75 mils of water is for dissolving our solute which is sugar. After five more minutes, you'll notice that the sugar cube has broken down, the 30th cube, in the 75 mils of water. But there's still particulate on the bottom, so it hasn't fully dissolved yet. So you'll notice the temperature reading is 6566, it's still holding steady. So because the temperature is still holding steady, That means we're still testing the solubility at this temperature. And if we look at the bottom, you'll notice that there are still sugar crystals that have not dissolved. It's taking significantly longer now. I think we've, I've been running this cube for almost 10, 12 minutes. It still hasn't broken down. Okay, now 33 is fully dissolved. But you'll notice as I swirl the water, it seems to be more viscous. You can check and see the reflection. It's actually looking more thick. There's a whole bunch of sugar. There's 33 sugar cubes in the 75 mils of water. Okay, you'll notice that the reflection is changing too. The system seems to be bending light differently now than it used to when it was just water. Let's try 34, see what happens. Okay, so in this sample, as you can see, both containers are at 70 degrees Celsius. Both contain 75 mils of water. This container has 36 sugar cubes in it already. This container has none. So they're both at the same temperature. Now I want you to see the change in the rate of dissolving. So we drop the sugar cubes in. Now I'm going to shake both. So I'll shake this one even more than the other one. Now let's examine the sugar cubes. This one, for example, is still whole. And this is the one that contains no sugar cubes, and you'll notice the sugar cube is gone already. Let's go back to this one. In real time, the whole cube is still there. It hasn't even broken down yet. So what does this mean? This solution already has way too many sugar molecules in it, it can't take anymore. 
So this would be an example of a saturated solution. This one, because it only has one sugar cube, we know that it can take at least 30, 35 more before it looks like this. One more thing to examine. If we check the meniscus at the surface, you'll notice that this water level is about 150 mils. This one, the water level should be just below 100, and it is. So it's 75 mils. So the volume has gone up because we've added so many sugar cubes that the total volume of the system has increased. So we're at cube 37. Now our 75 mils of water looks like it's significantly more now. It's more viscous, and the cube is not dissolving. It's not even breaking apart. So because the crystals don't want to break apart, and because the, the, the molecules of solute are not dissolving into the solvent, we've reached our saturation point, meaning we should be able to identify the solubility of the substance, or the concentration. So when the volume doesn't change, we should be able to identify concentration of solute in solvent. That'll tell us our solubility. So you'll notice that on the 37th cube, even after waiting 20 minutes, we can see the cube is broken down, but it's all the little fragments of sugar crystals are still sitting throughout the solution. They're not dissolving. So again, we've reached our saturation point. No more sugar molecules are being dissolved. No more solute is being dissolved into the solvent.